This is the single best way that I've found to learn anatomy uh, to, a, to a high enough level to, to work in the industry. So um, this is not a sponsored video. I already own all of these books, um, but Anatomy for Sculptors have sent me um, quite a few of the hardback versions. Um, and I wanted to show you how amazing these are as a learning tool and why I teach with these books. So um, take a look at the video and see if it's something that you may want to add to your collection. So anyone that's followed me for the last few years will know that I'm a massive fan of anatomy uh, and anatomy learning. So I've spent um, quite a few years trying to improve my anatomy for 3D, 2D, for all kinds of different reasons. And what I'm going to show you today is one of the uh, sets of books that has made a massive difference to me. Um, and as much as I like collecting reference um, models and, and uh, uh, maquettes and skeletons and skulls, I do like to have physical books. And these are the books that I learn with mostly. Anatomy is one of the most important and possibly one of the hardest topics that an artist needs to study. People spend their entire careers studying the human form and see it as a lifelong ambition. There's many, many ways to study anatomy for an artist, including reference figures, full-size skeletons, um, anatomy models, thousands of videos and tutorials online, and of course, courses and course books. And these that we're gonna look at today, which is the Anatomy for Sculptors books. I first started to learn anatomy on my own and with a range of books that I managed to buy over a number of years, including Richer's 1889 Artistic Anatomy, Elliot Goldfinger's books on both human and animal anatomy, Gottfried Bam's, um, I can't even say this, Die Gestalt des Menschen, so apologies to my German friends there, and that book is completely in German, but I found it quite useful. And these are all amazing books, and they still are some of the best on the market, but there are better now, and ones that have been created for a much more modern audience with a wide variety of reasons to want to learn human anatomy. For this review, Anatomy for Sculptors have sent us a few of their hardback books, but in reality it wasn't necessary as I've purchased them all already and they're something I've been using for years, um, mainly with the soft cover, so it is nice to see the hardback versions. So the first title is called Anatomy for Sculptors Understanding the Human Figure and this is the one I started with um, actually as a Kindle book. Um, and I, I had it on my Kindle and my iPad before I even purchased the, um, the soft cover. Um, and it's perfectly, perfectly usable in that format. It's much nicer to have the hardcover, but it's not essential. I obviously don't have time to cover the entire range of books, but um, the first book does actually start with a really comprehensive history of the author, Aldis Zarins, and how he started this project and created these wonderful books. And these are his own words where he says, finally, the book has come into physical form after hard and passionate work for 20 years. It took 11 years of classical art education, 200 international sculpting festivals, symposiums and exhibitions, as well as the past four years of great teamwork, researching, doing in-depth studies of human anatomy and creating illustrations to bring this book to life. And to, to someone like me who appreciates someone who's passionate, this is a clear passion project. The, the passion that is poured into these pages is just phenomenal. Um, you, you can see it in all of the titles, but this first one is very special and you can tell that it was his baby as he, as he spent all of those years getting ready to create a book of this level um, and, and then pouring all of that knowledge that he'd acquired into it for, for us. And I, and I genuinely, genuinely you know, think that this was a massive passion for him before he ever got it released. So as we do have the hardback versions, um, I need to mention the quality before I even start. So the, the quality is exceptional and um, they are really solidly made. Um, the book, it, the, the, the cover back and front and the spine are exceptionally um, solid. Um, you're not going to have these on the shelf uh, and have them wrecked in, in, in no time. They will stand the test of time. Um, and there's no jacket with them, which is interesting. So the, 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 the hard covers come just like this, um, as they are, which I'll be honest with you. I mean, I've been using my uh, paper copies for about 
four or five years and there's no damage on them whatsoever and i use them quite quite regularly um, so the quality of the, the cover uh, shines out above uh, anything else that I've got in my collection. Um, and if you look at the quality of the paper inside, it's high gloss um, and very, very thick paper. So I don't know the actual grams, but um, the quality of the photographs is exceptional. Um, all the way through the illustrations, the photographs, everything, it, it screams of quality. So you're not going to be unhappy um, with the, uh, the books themselves. So the way that um, the book, the book, certainly the first one is broken down is it's in four major sections. So in the table of contents, you have figure and torso, head and neck, upper limb and lower limb. And what I love about the books is that they're color coordinated. So you can actually see the little bit of um, coloring in the graphics uh, and it actually changes per section. So you've got green here for this, this section, which is when you go into the hands and the wrists. And as you move through the book and you move to the upper and lower torso, you've got different, again, different sections that you can see. So there's the lower limb in blue. Um, and it really makes it easy to jump into the different sections. So you'll know if you're in um, the, the, the darker brown colour, you know you're in the, the, the initial start of the book and the, and the torso. And you move into the orange, um, into the blue and into the green. So it's very, very simple to navigate through. And what you might have seen already, just from my, my quick look at the book here, um, is that it's very graphically heavy. It's very, very um, visually intense, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So the, the books are very, very focused on teaching visually. Um, the text is kept to a minimal in all three books where possible. And that means that almost all the major learning comes from looking at photos, a paint over, a diagram, a cross section or a line illustration. And that really depends uh, for you on how you learn best. Um, for me, it was a godsend. Um, so most anatomy books rely heavily on narrative and text. And quite often you'll be referring to um, letters that mean um, the name of a, a muscle group or a group of, of muscles and, and bone um, and that can get complex and it can get confusing and everything in this book is broken down in a much much simpler form so the names are just numbered the names of muscles are just numbered uh, and the names are all there for you so if you're you know if you really want to learn the muscles you can literally just work by number to, to name. There's no abbreviation at all, which really helps. So when you're just getting going, knowing that the, the zygomatic minor muscle is number seven, you can find it and it's color coded there. Now that just makes everything so much easier. Certainly some of the other books that I learned from are very, very challenging when you have to learn all of your muscles by a, a set of um, uh, ac acronyms, I suppose they are. So. They're just abbreviated versions, um, so you have to take it from the image to the the, the narrative, um, and then and then unpick it from there. So don't get me wrong, you know that way of learning is fine, but it's a lot more labour intensive than this, where it's very very well labelled and, and and very very simple in almost all cases. And and let's be honest, you're going to be learning this stuff for a long time if you're dedicated to learning anatomy. You're not gonna. You're not gonna do this quickly. Um, these books are not for one sitting. They're not bite-sized. They're not for just sitting down and just getting through in, in in one or two sessions. These are things that you will probably be learning for quite some years if if that's something that you're you're aiming to do. Uh, it's a reference book um, that will guide you as you grow as an artist, and whether that's for classics, uh, 3D, or physical sculpting, th these are going to be invaluable to you. So rather than go through chapter by chapter, which as I've already said, is quite extensive, um, as you can see from the table of contents, what I'm gonna do is just pick a couple of sections and show you how you can learn from, from this kind of book. So let me just quickly randomly pick some sections. Um, so this is a great example. So a lot of the time um, in the book, there are either photographs or, or drawings that are then drawn over with, with um, uh, the muscles painted over. And this is brilliant because one, you can see the photograph and two, you can see where the muscles are laid over the top. Now you'll see this a lot online, 
but you don't always see it as uh, uh, you know broken down as well as this and color coded in the, in this way. So a lot of people that do it online are just copying what they've seen in this book over the years. So it's it's a well used technique and it works really really well. So if you want to learn something as complex as the upper back and you want to start pecking through what you know the bony landmarks for a start. So you've got here number two, the seventh vertebra. So that's a key bony landmark here. Um, and then into the major muscle groups. So we've got number three here in two places. So this is your trapezius. And it quite clearly shows where it, you know, basically where its insertion and origin points are, which is a big bit of learning about where does it, where does it join and where does it end? Or where does it attach to a skeleton? And then where does it go to? So th these drawings don't particularly show that bit quite as well, but these are where the muscles are laid down and how they strap over each other, or if, or if they're a, a strap muscle, like for example here, something like your latissimus dorsi that literally straps down other groups of muscles. And it's shown really well. And that, and that reflects all the way through the book. So that style of drawing, for example here, this is one of my favorite ones, so this is how the um, the arm is shown in all the different positions. So you'll see it's supinated, you'll see it's semi-pronated. Supinated is where your hand is up. So whether your, your arm is up or down, you know, the, whether the position of your hand is a big, big piece of learning that you need to do. So you've got pronation and supination and how the ulna and radius twists. And that's all shown in these drawings. And it, and it really clearly says here from this little red view, that's the view from the, that angle. So you're looking from this side and that's how the muscles look. So you can get it turned around in your head and you can see how these muscles, a great one there is, is, is looking at the tricep, how it looks from all these different angles. So again, drawn over a photograph and clearly showing how the muscles are laid out. So it's a really good example of that. There are numerous um, areas where you see the, 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 the skeleton and how the skeleton matters before you ever get to the muscles. So there's either 3D models like this, or there's photographs of bones, or there's illustrations like this. And wherever possible, they're color-coded. So if you wanna look at something like the clavicle and start learning how that interacts at the acromion process here with the, with, you know, you've got the shoulder blade and the clavicle, so scapula and clavicle, and the part where it meets, all clearly detail. And there is obviously narrative when it's needed. So it will explain these areas quite clearly w w when it's needed. So here's the acromion process in yellow, in orange, and then the collarbone, the clavicle, and then your, your shoulder blade here. And then that's backed up with photographs again. So, and backed up again with the, with the draw overs. And again, you'll see that all the way through the book where you see the skeleton cropping up wherever it's needed. And it's mostly where you see these bony landmarks or the areas where the bone is coming to the surface and it gives you a clear indication of your form. Um, and that's shown really, really well throughout the book. I also like these, which is um, the, the top views and the, and the slices through that. That's shown quite a bit as well. So next, what you're going to see a lot of are these, which are 3D scans. Um, and we use these a lot at work. Um, so we scan a, a lot of people for TV and film work. Um, but they're great to learn from if you can get hold of them. Seeing them in the book and then applying to the anatomy learning is fantastic. So here's a great example of um, a leg scan, and again, shown from all angles, and it shows what the surface of that leg looks like as you're learning the muscles and the bones underneath. So having these scan photographs of these scans from all angle really helps you go from that kind of um, drawing over the top and understanding where the muscles are um, in, a, in a graphical form to seeing what they look like on the surface of a scan. And of course you could use photographs for this and that does happen in the book as well. So there's plenty of examples where there's a photograph, then a black and white photograph with the muscles drawn over the top. So you've got a wide range of techniques um, showing you how to, to learn these muscles um, in, in a very structured way. Another uh, graphical technique that I uh, is very close to my heart is this kind of thing. So this is where you use um, a 3D model kind of a process. So it's actually drawing what the topology of a model would be like to show you how you block out a model. And um, so you can see the difference there, a finger stretched out, slightly curled, and then going into this, into this shape. And rather than using just, just the photographs, it shows how you can block them out. 
So that's another way to learn anatomy like this. And it's a way that matters to me because I'm a, predominantly a 3D sculptor. So quite often I want to be making these primary shapes rather than drawing them. And that then brings me on to the photography. So right the way through all three books, there's a huge amount of photography reference, photographic reference. Um, I think there's more in the other two books. I feel like um, the, 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 there's a lot less in this initial book, but this book is the one that you would start with. And even in this book, there are plenty, as you can see here, there are plenty of um, bits of information about expressions and about the head and about the face. Um, the other two books go in much, much more detail about those two areas. But as you can see here from the photogra photographic reference in here alone, it's quite comprehensive if you want to make a start. There's lots of examples where the photograph is used with the drawer over and used with the skeleton. And that's using all of those different techniques to really show you all of the details that you can see. When, when you see this, quite, you, know, you know, it doesn't look that muscly. It's not like a, a ripped bodybuilder, but underneath is exactly the same muscle structure as you would see in a bodybuilder. Um, and it explains all of the form, including the insertion and origin points, which is, is one of the main learnings that you'll get. And on top of that, or underneath that, so this is on top of, then the um, illustration of the skeleton. And it clearly shows the, um, the these insertion and origin areas. So when you go back and you start seeing it in a collection of other groups of muscles, and then when you see it like with, with just the skin, it makes it a lot easier to understand and then move on to the next page on here and you can see that brachyradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus all labeled all the full name and all clearly colored so that you can see it in situ so move along that process and you start to unpick all of this complexity um, in a very visual way now these next two books are anatomy of facial expression and the form of the head and neck. And they are very, very similar in terms of how they're put together. Um, these again are both the hardback versions, but you can get obviously um, the, the, the softback or the download. And the, the structure and the way that you're taught in here is exactly the same. So there's a wide range of photographs. There's a lot of um, 3D models and scans and also a lot of illustrative drawovers. So again, exactly what you have in the first book, which is the name of the muscle, drawn over an accurate uh, photograph and showing you that you know where these muscles attach. And again, the color coding is really, really useful. So this book, The Anatomy of Facial Expression, is super useful if you're into animation and you want to learn about how a face um, changes based on how the muscles move how the eyes move, how the muscles around the mouth move. Um, and I, it's, it's an absolute must buy for an animator because you can see the changes um, in the face based on the muscles and the fat, which not everybody teaches you. So these yellow areas are where the fat deposits are. And again, it also teaches you when you get older, how these fat deposits um, grow and shrink and change the facial structure. So it's not all about bones. It's not all about muscles. It's all, a, you know, the whole um, set of, of, of everything, including the fat, is what makes you look like you do. So understanding all of them is, is crucial. Um, and then the, the, these are basically like phonemes, as we call them. So these are mouth shapes. Uh, and again, useful if you're going to do animation, you want to understand how these shapes are made. Incidentally, one quick look at the back of the book and you've got recommendations from Stan Prokopenko and Gio Nakpil. Now, are, these are two people that I've learned from for absolutely years. And if they say the book is good, you can guarantee that, that, that it is good. So this is not a hard review to do because it simply is uh, an amazing collection of reference books. So the final one, the form of the head and the neck, um, some people would argue that this is the most complex part of the body. So the, the three areas that, that I would say are the most complex are the forearm, the back and shoulders and the head. And the head is pr almost certainly the most complex because the amount of muscles that come together in there um, and, and what you have to learn to get it to look accurate it, it is probably the biggest bit of learning that you're gonna have to do. So yet again, 
we have scans, we have drawings, we have draw overs, we have paint overs. But there, this is this is a, like a third in the in the series. So it, it goes back and gives us um, proportions, which the first two books do as well. But then it hold, also goes really heavily into movement of the head um, with with using the, the the scans and the 3D models again. So um, just a, a nice complement to the other two books if you want to heavily focus on um, just the head. So the expression and the facial anatomy book is almost like two, this and that are like two parts of one book really. Um, but the depth that, that, that you, this is covered in is just phenomenal. So you, you can pretty much get a good understanding of um, any facial shape and any facial type just from this book. So if this is something, if you've got a good understanding of anatomy already and you just want to pep up on one area, then I'd suggest just, just take this um, and just focus on the head as one bit of learning. Um, my definite recommendation is over time you get them all. So that you know that they're an investment that will keep on giving, I can promise you. They they are um one of my favourite books, if not my favourite anatomy book, they're, they're the, one of the prime books in my collection, without a doubt. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content. And if you like us enough to give us a thumbs up, then why not join the channel and subscribe down below? If you do that, make sure you hit the notification bell, then we can let you know when we're uploading new content.